Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my August 2018 book haul. I attempted to film this uh, last night, but I don't know, something wonky happened to the tape. Uh, and uh, when I got it into my editor, there was a lot of uh, static, and most of the sound was cut out, and I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I figured I'll try for better luck this time, and uh, it's a pretty short uh, book haul because I was a good girl this month, and uh, in the face of two ridiculously long hauls, at least two from the last couple of months, I only have three books to show you that are now mine, and uh, I have a couple of library books. Plus, I plan to read all of these books this month, so purchase is justified! <laughs> This first book technically wasn't a purchase, it was a gift by Steve Donahue, who got a second copy from the publishers. This is A Palace of Pearls, the stories of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. And I tried to repay Steve by giving to his Project Penguin, but I failed pretty miserably at uh, finding anything that he didn't already have, so <laughs> maybe I should have stuck with a Brattle Books gift card or however people pay him to money for going to the store. But anyway, this is um, a collection of folk tales and fairy tales um, told by Rabbi Nachman of Bretzlov, who is the great-grandson of the founder of Hasidim in Judaism, and he uh, founded his own Hasidic uh, group as well. And uh, I'm excited because it's incredibly Jewish content, and I thought that uh, that would be nice for reading over High Holidays in a couple of months. And, as I mentioned in my latest Author's Answer video, I'm attempting to write a uh, fantasy novel for NaNoWriMo this year, and the more I say that, I guess the more I have to do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm getting things together in my head, uh, but I still need a little bit of a push in the world-building department, and I wanted to do something within Judaism, and I'm particularly interested in the Shekinah, which is a, a Kabbalistic concept, if I'm correct on that, and uh, uh, Rabbi Nachman is uh, definitely uh, interested in Kabbalism, and I will uh, read from the flap about this collection. <clears throat> Rabbi Nachman of Bretzlov, uh, born in 1772 and died in 1810, is a widely considered to be one of the foremost visionary storytellers of the Hasidic movement. The great-grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, founder of the movement, Rabbi Nachman came to be regarded as a great figure and leader in his own right, guiding his followers on a spiritual path inspired by the Kabbalah. In the last four years of his life, he turned to storytelling, crafting highly imaginative allegorical tales for his Hasidim. Three-time National Jewish Book Award winner Howard Schwartz has masterfully compiled the most extensive collection of Nachman's stories available in English. In addition to the well-known 13 tales, including The Lost Princess and The Seven Beggars, Schwartz has included over 100 narratives in the various genres of fairy tales, fables, parables, dreams, and folk tales, many of them previously unknown or believed lost. One such story is the carefully guarded Tale of the Bread, which was never intended to be written down and was only to be shared with those Bretzlavers who could be trusted not to reveal it. So that's kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of makes me feel guilty about that. Maybe I'll skip it, I don't know. <laughs> Eventually recorded by Rabbi Nachman's scribe, the tale has maintained its mythical status as a hidden story. Hidden story. <laughs> With utmost reverence and unfettered delight, Schwartz has carefully curated a palace of pearls alongside masterful commentary that guides the reader through the rabbi's spiritual mysticism and uniquely Kabbalistic approach ultimately revealing Rabbi Nachman to be a literary heavyweight in the vein of Gogol and Kafka. Vibrant, wise, and provocative, this book is a must-read for any lover of fairy tales and fables. It's also a particularly long book, or, you know, it feels that way to me with my usual uh, 250 to 450 mark, I guess, and uh, also there's a lot of uh, appendices in this one, and uh, to be honest, I tend to skip appendices in a lot of nonfiction, but I'm not sure I want to in this case, so <laughs> hopefully I can make it through all of this. <laughs> but uh, I do think it's going to be very uh, intriguing. Next, we have my most anticipated adult science fiction release of 2018. This is Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers, and uh, since uh, September is Sci-Fi September month, I finally feel like I should get around to reading it. <laughs> Record of a Spaceborn Few is um, a standalone novel, but the third in uh, Chambers' Wayfarer series, which is uh, about uh, humans in a future 
world, I should not say, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, society in space where we've made alien contact and for the most part seem to be living with them pretty well. But this particular book takes place on a generation ship and uh, most of the characters are humans, but there are a couple of aliens, I believe. And people have been talking about this book, wondering um, where it uh, fits with uh, Chambers' first two books. Uh, there's A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which was her first book, and uh, always gives me personal fuzzy feelings because it takes place on a, uh, a work ship where the people are punching in wormholes, and it's just a variety of different characters, and uh, they're just sort of living and being a crew together on the ship, and it gave me fuzzy feelings that reminded me of my favorite uh, television show of all time, Farscape. And uh, in fact, uh, Bet uh, Chambers has written a post, a blog post, about how she was thinking about Farscape with this book, and I know I've linked it a couple of other times, and I figure I'll link it again, so that's why the, here's a long way to a small angry planet that I got out to show you, because I do have all the warm fuzzy feelings for the first book. I also like the second book, uh, Close in Common Orbit. Uh, I think it took me a little longer to get into, but ultimately uh, the characters and the situations were very moving and affecting, and I really liked it. But I kind of feel like, unlike the other two who are kind of thinking this one is like uh, somewhere in between the two in terms of where they'll like it, I think this one might be my favorite. I, I, I mean, I haven't read it yet, but I, I think that uh, the focus on, on a generation ship, I, I don't know, it's been something that I, I've been really intrigued by uh, lately, the idea of what it would be like to live on this ship with this uh, singular purpose uh, from Earth, but now it's so many years later and life is so different and, you know, the society and cultures are so different. And then to be able to follow disparate characters with their own personal stories, I just think this is going to be pretty awesome and I'm very excited. <laughs> this next purchase feels kind of silly because I'm not even sure if I'm going to read it, uh, but I found it for very cheap and this is Safe in America by Mar Marcy Hersham. And I got it because it's been on my Goodreads TBR for uh, several years, and I am in the middle of this project where I'm taking Sean the Book Maniac's page 112 tag, and I'm using it to pit two books against each other that have been on my Goodreads for several years, uh, and that they have similar themes, and often my theme is intergenerational Jewish families. And so this one had been on for a while, and I was in intrigued, but I'm not sure if it's going to be the one I end up reading. And uh, in either case, I'll probably be getting rid of it shortly uh, thereafter. But uh, I have it for now uh, to uh, put in the tag next month. The next books I have are from the library. I actually went and I spent several hours yesterday uh, walking between libraries in the D.C., uh, Maryland uh, area uh, just because it was such a nice day and I thought it would be a nice excuse to get some walking in. And uh, even though technically I tried to go to three libraries for three books and one of them I couldn't find. And not to mention that was the library where I got incredibly lost and ended up like walking like a mile or two out of my way, but at least my Fitbit was happy with me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is the one I got from uh, Montgomery County Library in Bethesda, my, which is, well, Montgomery County is my home library county. Anyway, <laughs> this is uh, Golden Country by uh, Jennifer Gilmore, and it is the second book that I want to uh, use in my page 112 tag for this month, and I get pretty good vibes off of it, so I think this might be the one I end up reading, so <laughs> spoiler alerts. <laughs> and finally, this uh, next pick is uh, my most anticipated fantasy release of 2018. This is Fire Dance by Ilana C. Meyer, and it is book two of, I don't even think this uh, series has a name. There are so They are supposed to be standalones, but I do hear that uh, it helps to have some knowledge of her first book, uh, The Last Song Before Night, which I uh, read a few years ago, and I don't necessarily think I'm going to reread because I don't really have the time. <laughs> but uh, I thought I'd have it for reference just in case, and I wanted to check it out to support the author because this uh, book, unlike the Becky Chambers, is uh, much less well-known, so I'm trying to give it its... Uh, publicity because uh, it's it, it was a beautiful lyrical story. It uh, 
is inspired by troubadours and we have a character who is a female troubadour in the story and it links into magic and uh, Thomas from SFF uh, 180 actually read the first book and although he was disappointed with how it uh, devolved into a traditional fantasy quest he loved the writing and the world building and I know he was intrigued to read this one and if uh, <laughs> if I knew him better I might uh, ask him what he thought of the book <laughs> maybe I should anyway I'm curious but I'm really thinking I'm gonna like it and uh, so I'll be reading this next month. So that about covers it for me now. I actually have a very busy schedule for September. I mean, beyond usual work stuff. <laughs> I mean, it, it's sci-fi September, so um, a lot of the books I showed you plus more are on my docket that I hope to get to. And uh, it's uh, the Jewish High Holidays, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, so I'm um, and they all take place on weekdays this year, so I'll be taking all that time from work to, to go to services, and I'm singing with the, my flash choir on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, so I'm very excited for that. And uh, in the DC library system, they are um, doing uh, their third annual uh, Band Book Hunt a month, which is in honor of Band Books Week, which is in the last week of September. And what they do is they uh, hide uh, various copies of, uh, I believe it'll be six books, they're not telling us exactly, but last year it was six books uh, all around a theme and they'd all been banned. Uh, last year the theme was dystopian books and this uh, year the theme is about activism and they will hide the books and they'll all have special covers so you know they're part of the game in various library branches and in various local businesses and it's just a lot of fun to take part in. <laughs> so I'll be doing that as well and hopefully not cutting too much into my reading time but <laughs> future Rachel here with a cat behind me but I can't believe I forgot to mention uh, that I'm also taking part in a mandatory buddy read where I was summoned by Steve Donahue and he and I and a bunch of other booktubers will be reading Brewster's Millions uh, next uh, month and I'm excited. I, I don't think I've ever uh, participated so directly with a bunch of booktubers before and I went ahead and I downloaded Voxer and have been voxing with a couple of people and uh, I believe we'll have a, a group going up pretty soon because we're reporting for duty on the first so <laughs> that's also in the wheelhouse for September. <laughs> Lots going on and meanwhile I still have some goals that I want to get through uh, in the end of August, so I guess I will get back to that now. But thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.